my name is Rasen, and welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded. Uh, it's time to go in with the Mystic. I want to do like a kind of rapid fire cantrip build. Take a random rare card. Sure, tell me what we're going for. Mirror Entity. Spells and Arts also advance next turn spells and arts counter. So anything that respects a certain or rather a large amount of spells and arts played. That's what we're going to want. Okay. The problem is, uh, for a very long period of time, that mirror entity is going to mean slightly less than nothing to me. Mm. Got him. Arcane accuracy. Whenever you play a spell during your turn, uh-uh. So that triggers on spell played, not for how many spells you've already played this turn. So as a result, it's not synergistic. Dividing blow, I guess it's just a little bit of extra draw, a little bit of extra damage. Side swipe. I mean, we, I, I might just take swide, uh, swide, wow. Side swipe because I don't have, I don't have any zero cost in this deck yet. So it'll be handy. I'm going to upgrade. I think I'm going to ultimately build thicker than I otherwise might. Randomize our starter relic. Like, if we get beaked, we just win. But no, I can't take that. Okay. By getting that gold, I'll actually go across this shop. Mm, shame. Uh, so, if you if you played two spells this turn, deal 20 damage instead. Crumbs. Wait, what? Wait, what? These are both spells. This is a spell and this is a spell. This is a spell that has an arcane trigger, so I guess it goes, these go in like a spell heavy deck. Like they're probably intended to work with one another. But the thing is, I thought spells had the circle. This has the arts tri uh, the arts uh, diamond. Hmm. I should probably still take Vorpal and Mirror Strike. I don't know if they work though. For every two spells played this turn, and if you've played two spells this turn. But Arcane only has an effect if you played a spell this turn. Will it? No, it will always be triggered, right? It will already be triggered. I, hmm, this is, this is confusing me a little, so I want to take these two. I also wanted to take Obscuring Misk, the ability to get that much block, and possibly an artifact is really good. Uh, but Shield is going to be another spell that helps me activate the other effects in our deck. Spell number one. Ah, uh, lame. Well, I don't have that many spells in the deck that I actually can play during this combat is the problem. Like, I actually am supposed to just go all aggression here. So this is also considered an art. If I played a spell this turn, it gets a second effect. So applying weak is the second effect. This is eight block, and then I apply that weak, and then I can strike. <clears throat> it's eight block because it's also four block this turn. We're probably going to need that. Or not. Baseball. Upon pick up a random card in your deck, it becomes free. All right. I'm obviously hoping that it's Mirror Entity, but it could also hit Flourish here. Flourish's costs one less per spell or art played this turn. Deals six damage twice, then doubles the spell or art count. Why does it never hit anything good? Literally ever. I've never hit it on anything that was not a basic card or not just a complete garbage card that I then removed. Sad. That was saddening. Mirror Entity is just way too expensive to basically literally ever play right now. In hallway fights at the very least, that happens to be true. Thank you. 
This attack is considered a spell. Has a special effect if you've played a spell this turn. We played two arts. This attack is considered a spell. I played two arts. All right. Uh, I think like my whole like whole deck archetype doesn't work anymore because of that. Magic weapon. It's a spell to gain two strength. Add a blade burst to your discard pile. Uh, blade burst is an art that exhausts and deals high damage for one energy. It loses the strength and it puts the magic weapon back in the draw pile. So this is effectively a skill and blade burst. Is that a? It is an art. Okay, so it's s s spells and art. Spells and art. Spells and art. And they bop, uh, bump back and forth between one another. So sure. I want to take on those two elites, but I think literally if I go into those fights, I'm dead. Can't be Gremlin Knob in the first combat. We're actually really good against the Log Bullen. Nice. I don't want to trigger Read Magic yet. Actually, no, I do. Yeah, for the possibility of getting Mirror Entity on the first turn. I've already played not this turn. Hell yeah, go us. I want to get that relic from the Mystic set that is all of your attacks also count as arts and all of your spells also count as... All of your skills also count as spells, rather. They were waking up that turn anyhow, so... Side swipe and then Shocking Grasp, Shield Spend. Not bad. Flourish is actually... Possibly going to be playable at some point here. Hey. Look at you, Flourish. Look at you. Getting played. Wait, did that count as a spell? What? This has just got to be a situation of my faulty brain, right? Spells played this turn, arts played this turn, one of each. Oh no, I played a magic weapon last turn. I did. Okay. Well, that one makes sense then. We kill here. Uh, Tiger Marble, at the start of each combat, add a random card which exhausts your hand. It goes zero until played. And we also get Fairy Bottle. Uh, whenever you would heal... Well, sorry, when you would die, heal to 10% of your max HP and instead discard this potion. I actually really, really, really want to get the Magic Missiles. Not for this deck, but in general. I want to do a Magic Missiles build that doesn't specifically infinite. Uh, because apparently that makes people mad. <laughs> uh, Pendib, every 10th attack you play deals double damage. If we can line that up with a Flourish, that's going to be really good. We actually managed to play a bunch. That's really cool. Um, spells played, one. Arts played, one. I get to start the next turn as if I've already played two spells? Where are my arts? Uh... Swipe. Play a spell and an art here. I play two arts and get. Okay. Cool. Okay, let me defend this turn. Um, the reason I defend that turn is because if I can hold them off for one more turn. Damn. If I could have holded them, uh, hold it, held them off for one more turn with like basically one defense card, I think I actually would have done it. Uh, I would have been able to save this fairy in a bottle. Oh well. Oh, I died. I actually filled the quest for dying. So I played one spell this turn. So I can actually shield and then Vorpal should be 
Yeah, 64. Nice. Uh, happy flower. Every three turns gain an energy. Not bad. Also, apparently, seemed... No, was not part of our quest. I don't know why that would happen then. Uh, deal seven damage with each spell in hand. And upgrades to... No, it's still an attack. Damn. Corrosive touch is a spell on the upgrade. Interesting. I think I take corrosive touch literally just so that I can trigger Vorpal thrust more often. Apotheosis? Sure. I mean, like, if we're ever going to start a fight with any sort of card that just, like, will immediately exhaust, I guess that's the one I wanted. Cool. Uh, whoo. Diversion is another zero-cost spell. But at the start of your turn, add a random cantrip to your uh, hand and draw one fewer cards. Uh, cantrips always, at the very least, draw you one card, so this evens out. Uh, but also, cantrips are considered spells as long as you played three, uh, three or fewer spells that turn. So we'll take a combo caster there. As much as I also wanted Diversion, Diversion's common. It's easier to get. If I can gain the artifacting, I can prevent the Fungi Beast's Spore Cloud from applying two vulnerability to us. So what? I have to play an art beforehand? Do I have any arts? Not really. Now. If I had any arts, I'd definitely play them. That's the problem. Alright. <clears throat> Get a bunch of spells played. Uh, sure, we'll swipe and then strike. Blow the house down. Uh, da -da -da. five foot step, deal four damage, arcane, shuffle this card into your draw pile. So it just gets you more arts later on, but it also shuffles your draw pile, by the way, for the possibility that that might be necessary for you. All right, hang on, strike, deal three damage plus an additional three energy for whatever this cost. Okay, so max, like, that's, let's assume it's upgraded level, right? So uh, deal four for, uh, plus an additional four for each it costs. Um... So at three, at, at at zero, this is four. At one, this is eight. At two, this is 12. This, this never is worth its cost. Oh, no, no, no. It's only worth its cost if it rolls a one, right? Because of the refund one that it has at the bottom there. And then it's a zero energy deal eight. Which is an upgraded... Unless it's like multiple triggers, like it's it's uh, deal four plus an additional four for each cost. Oh, right. Because it's plus an additional four for each cost, strength increase actually makes this more powerful. So it's it's twice affected by strength. I, I still don't know. Spell strike. Search your draw pile for an attack spell and play it. Well, we have uh, not flourish. But an attack spell can pull out a Vorpal Thrust. It's 15 damage. Occasionally it's 30 damage as well. Mm. Kind of want to take the spell strike. But it only searches the draw pile as well. So we actually have less control over the draw pile than the discard pile. Because obviously you can play something before you play another card. And then it's already in the discard pile. But not the same for the draw. All right, I may actually end up taking nothing here. Maybe even Pantograph for the 25 HP at the start of the boss fight. Okay. I'm going to take the Cursed Coin from Replay the Spire. On pickup, we'll obtain 150 gold and a random curse. Uh, and then I'm going to immediately just remove that curse because I don't mind. It's Roth from Hubris. Uh, deal five damage to a random enemy. Place a copy of this into your discard pile. And it's on autoplay as well. Uh, and then we'll take the pantograph. Effectively, because it was 150 to pick up the curse there and then 75 to remove it, I got 75 overall in terms of benefit, right? But it also means that I'm going to have uh, 25 higher cost every single time I want a card removed from this point on. And as a result of that, as long as I remove fewer than three cards from my deck after this point, I've made a net positive on the co uh, cursive coin.
That went down surprisingly well. Uh, this too, I guess. Sure. Oh yeah. Well, this one's. Hmm. Even if I play Blade Lance at the very start of that turn, I couldn't have kills. Outside of also playing Liquid Bronze, and that doesn't save me any HP. Faint adds a random cantrip to your draw pile. Cantrips are just spell cards. I don't think I need Faint. Faint is also an art. We actually have a surprising amount of arts already in the deck. Arcane Accuracy. I guess, like, when we have the cantrips in the deck, it has some value, but... Gosh, it's two. Mirror strike nine and another nine damage for every two spells played this turn. So if you trigger the, like, if you trigger it once, it's 18 for one. That's really good. Plus whatever your strength is at the time, right? But the problem is we're not triggering it once repeatedly yet. I think once combo caster starts doing its thing, we'll, we'll be triggering it multiple times. We'll dig this up here. Chameleon Ring, your motion, your potions are now more potent and you can brew at rest sites. Sure. All right, Guardian. Spell Recall, return a spell from your discard pile to your hands. Not bad. All right. Play a bunch of spells this turn and then Mirror Strike. All right, so I played, what, six spells this turn? Yeah, not bad. I didn't strike beforehand because then I would have done less damage because I would have had to go against the block. So I would have already triggered the curl up. That was a misclick, by the way. I was trying to play both of my defense there. As it turns out, I was definitely going to be taking damage this turn anyway, so... Well, we were fine either way, I guess. Well, it depends on your definition of fine, but still, it, it's okay. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Mirror Strike has a second already. Cool. Little arts, then spell, shock and grasp. We can now strike before the Mirror Strike, and Mirror Strike is going to be, oh, 27 solid damage for one energy. I mean, now that's just the kind of thing that you like to see. Double the spell and art count. All right, hang on. And then mirror entity. Spells and arts played carry over the next turn. Okay, so the doubled current event doesn't necessarily mean that they would be doubled in the next turn as well. Okay, just have to check that. Well, that flourish is now just like a payoff for this build rather than a building element for this build. That is to say, it doesn't really construct anything. Thirty-two nine, right? So we're short on lethal, but if I take six damage here, we go down to eighteen, and then the next hand we have ray of frost blade. But yeah, we can probably finish them in the next hand. I can't attack again, otherwise I'm, you know, history. Play Blade Burst at the end of the round, so I'm going to read Burst. I think if we don't kill the... I mean, literally, if we don't kill the enemy this turn, we're already dead, right? So, let's get rid of Arcane. Are we necessarily dead? Yeah. Yeah. We're actually one away from having the Pendib trigger as well. That would have been enough to save us. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, having the other 
uh, what? Arcane Dodge. So Arcane Dodge for nine, Defend for five. Uh, and then we also have this block of five, five, five. So 15, and then I take five damage over the top of it. Even if I use Thorns. Yeah, you still strike me the full four times. Yeah, no, I was dead either way there. All right. Well, we need to immediately die because we're on 20 minutes, which is the cutoff point for not doing another run. So I'm going to try and sneak one in here. Come on. Hell yeah. Random common relic. Let's be safe. Woo! Lantern. Gain energy at the start of each combat. Not half bads. It's a great path over here that only has two elites. I hate that I have to say it only has two elites and be happy about that, but... Mm. Rough times. Called for rough measures, I guess? Look <clears throat> strike is... And now... Oh, I really wanted the shocking grasp to the finish there. Look, it's Vorpal Thrust again. Okay. I still want to trigger it. <clears throat> Got to shop in a couple spaces. Uh, we should upgrade a strike right now. I think. Combo Caster, sure. Well, Combo Caster and Tome of Spells both perform similar things for me, right? We're literally one short of being able to take both. Lame. Um, all right, I'm gonna take combo caster then. Literally one short of being able to take both. Like, ah. Uh. Ooh, yeah, runic icosahedron. Right click during combat to activate. Once per combat, you may roll the icosahedron. I have been waiting to see this for a while. Nine, we lose 50 gold. Nice. Got him. All that gold, thinking I was gonna use it. Ugh. Don't roll a natural one. That's all I care about. Oh, one in three here. Uh, I didn't draw correctly, unfortunately. I'm gonna save the speed potion for a turn where it can save me more than three HP. Three HP just seems like a little too little to receive. What's well, five HP this turn at the very least? Press the digitation. Spell number one. And I don't have a second spell. Lame. We're getting enough cantrips in this deck that eventually I should have two spells in a single turn. Oh, spark. Ray of frost, ray of frost. That's that's a spell. Now I've played three spells in a turn. Damn. Ooh, acid splash, nice kill. Acid Splash Prestidigitation. Hell yeah, we actually do get to use Vorpal Thrust for its extra damage. I know, I'm surprised too. Uh, Vorpal Thrust, 24. So 24 for two energy. Is that even good? 30 for two energy? I guess that's like a carnage. You don't know if I like that. All right, trip Strike the back line for kill. War Pain upon pick up upgrade two random skills. Not bad. Uh, choose one spell from your draw pile and add it to your hand. What spell would I want that early? None. Alright, I think we take Diversion. Yeah, got upgraded as well. Not bad. Um, Rapid Caster would totally be takeable, but obviously we can't take it, so we won't take it. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to be a shop. Wouldn't have gone there if I knew. Ornamental fan. Every time we play three attacks in single turn, game four block. That's really good. A lot of the cantrips are spells as well as attacks. Right. Icosahedron. Nice. We're vulnerable. 
As if I wasn't prior. <laughs> Alright, cultist. Yes, I thought I had four energy that turn. <clears throat> Oops, effectively. Woo, that sound effect. What was that? Elixir, exhaust all status and curse cards, as well as corrosive touch on the upgrades of spell, right? Yeah, it is. Low cost spells. Good job. Woo, purple bonfire as well. All right. Um, I'm actually just going to throw a standard strike. All right, Gremlin Knob, let's see what you've got. Give me another spell somehow. Actually, hang on. Cool. <sighs> We're going to roll a 21 of these days. You'll see. You'll all see. Just trying to make it as much of a voice break there as possible. So both of these are technical and I don't have a single art, so I can't trigger either. I think actually putting the vulnerability on the enemy there may have saved me a turn's worth of damage if I did it correctly. Yeah. I think ultimately it would have saved me damage to have played the vulnerability two turns ago with the diversion, so. Diversion, and then Vorpal's literally just not enough. Oh no, I have played two spells. Awesome. Rabbit's foot. Whenever you play an art, you gain a block. Mm -hmm. I play arts in this deck? Not really. If I absolutely have to, I do. Mm -hmm. So the natural one, by the way, unplayable. When drawn, lose an energy. Soulbound. Cannot be removed from our deck. So you know. Oh, I'm as, I'm as thrilled about that as you might imagine that I am. So long as in your imagination, I'm furious. That sound is so jarring. Uh, add a random cantrip to your hand, then copy all cantrips into your draw pile. Yep. It's a bunch more spells. Cool. All right, so I can kill the backliner straight up. One out, and then I get to weaken you. Actually defend for a surprisingly good amount, considering. Hell yeah. Get him! I like it. Finish you. Show me. Mm, probably too much there already. I guess among these options, I just want to toke, remove something from my deck. Vorpal Thrust is supposed to be our main source of damage. By the way, this is how I learn about characters by trying to force builds that seem like they should work in the character's kind of build and archetype. Uh, if I was doing high ascension, I would just be trying to do the things that I know work, but you do have to afford me a little bit of time to actually explore and understand new characters. It's like, I can sight read only with respect to, and I've mentioned this before, I can only sight read like characters and how powerful they might be uh, with respect specifically to... Da, 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 uh, cool. We're actually going to be able to cast the Vorpal Cast this turn. Uh, specifically when I compare them to other things similar in nature, I guess. And those don't always exist, especially for this kind of character. I made the argument before that the spell and art system makes it very difficult to look at any individual card from this character and assess its power level with respect to other characters. 
I stand by that. Alright, that was a surprisingly good turn for us. We do have the 20 damage out of nowhere with the fire potion, by the way, so... That has the possibility of suddenly being relevant at the wrong time. Uh, I obviously want to Ray of Frost to try and draw that defend. Oh, of course, the defend changed the cost as soon as I drew it, naturally. Unfortunately, that also means that I have the natural one in my next turn, so I have less energy this turn. Oh, God. Really? All right, I want to know, would Elix Elixir would have burnt it? So Soulbound can be overridden. Well, I guess Exhaust isn't specified by Soulbound, so it's literally just you can't remove it. Okay. It's it's just because there's a uh, there's a default way to refer to that in the base game, which is this card cannot be removed from your deck. Uh which obviously exists on Ascendant's Bane, but it exists on Necronomicon's Necronomicus, but in a different fashion in that it re-adds itself to your deck every single time you uh, do anything to it, including exhaust it, which is why I didn't know specifically when a card is soulbound whether or not it returns after an exhaust, which is why I didn't ex uh, Elixir at the start of the fight. I assumed it was possible I was going to be completing the fight without having to play it. For the moment... Oh, by the way, we're dead. We're, like, extraordinarily dead right now. For the moment. My name is Bean. Can't leave the first floor. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.